Tomorrow marks 29 years ago to the day when I last saw Tom Puxtis. Tommy was a senior at the University of Florida, competing in the Javelin at the 1990 NCAA Championships in Durham, North Carolina. And uh, I was completing my one-year internship in the Gator Sports Information Office. My responsibilities were men's track and field, and I got to know and work with Tom pretty much on a, on a daily basis. And uh, one of the absolute joys of my career was working with track and field news and helping place a photo of Tom after he set the NCAA U.S. collegiate record. And I might add, it's a record that remains to this day uh, that was held at Percy Beard Track in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, while at COD, Tom was the 1987 national champion and the following year set the national junior college record. It remains today. And please join me now as we take a look at two-time Olympian Tom Puxtis. Tom Puxtis competed in the Javelin for the Chaparrales and later became the United States top thrower for nearly a decade. A member of the 1992 and 1996 U.S. Olympic teams, Puxtis was a six-time United States champion and was ranked number one in his sport seven times by the U.S. Track and Field News. While at COD, he was the 1987 NJCAA national champion and national junior college record holder and later became a two-time All-American at the University of Florida. He established the U.S. collegiate record in 1990 and remains the national junior college season record holder with a throw of 248 feet 5 inches in 1988. He was inducted into the National Junior College Track and Field Hall of Fame in 1997. Please join me in welcoming former track and field coach legend Ron Otteson, who will introduce our fifth honoree tonight, Tom Puxtis. Oh, it's my honor. It's my honor to introduce uh, the best athlete I've ever had, period. And we had some pretty good ones. And uh, you'll be hearing from them in years to come. Uh, it's my honor to, to introduce Tom into the first Hall of Fame. Not only is he a superior athlete, but an outstanding human being. And that's, that's even more important, right? His accomplishments. First of all, he got, he got married in 205 to Ann. That's, that, that's his biggest accomplishment to date. Uh, <laughs> College of the Page Juco champion. Uh, junior college champion. He threw 225-1 his first meet. And then the second time he won a national champion, it was, was 248-5. And that record, that national record for junior college division one still stands to this day. He then went to University of Florida where it was a lot warmer. And uh, so, holds a school record an Amer American collegiate record at 273.3, and, and uh, then his big accomplishment at that time uh, was his, his professional career, which has really blossomed. He's six times U.S. champion. Want me to repeat that? Six time U.S. champion. Uh, he has six U.S. records set. First one in uh, 93, 281 feet, two feet, uh, 281 two and two inches. And the last one in 97, 285, 10. His world ranking has always been in the top five in the world. Um, he was an Olympiad in 92 and 96 and has competed in 100, over 180 international competitions. He's uh, now, his accomplishments are national coordinator for men's throws in the U.S. He was a U.S. Olympic team coach for throws at the 
London Olympics, which is quite a thrill, I think. Uh, he's also the father of three boys. Um, and a, currently residing in Alabama. May I introduce uh, my hero, Tommy Puxtis. Uh, I arrived at COD a little bit into my freshman year at college. Came from Eastern Illinois University, which I thought was gonna be a great fit. Didn't really work out. Uh, I was in search of some place that would welcome me, maybe encourage me, give me some direction. I found the right place at the right time. I came in in January, totally balanced. I had a chip on both shoulders, a little reckless, but I found the right people to support me in the right school to find my ways. One of my greatest regrets in life is poor grades in high school. Didn't grasp the idea that you have to study and prepare well for your future. I thought I should just have fun, do the best I could. Wasn't a bad guy, just didn't get it. Had COD, was about an hour away from the house. Had a chance to figure it out by staying on campus and actually doing schoolwork. After lunch, I would just spend my time in a wonderful library uh, in the study areas we had at school. Thought the athletic building was extraordinary. Actually, when I first stepped foot on campus, I thought I was in like a set of Battlestar Galactica or something like that. It's a great school, great place. I wasn't used to seeing something so nice. So I really appreciated that. So I studied. And then I met this coach, Coach Addison, and managed to do, you know, I was ready to train. I was gung-ho. You didn't have to worry about me working hard. Uh, you had to probably worry about me breaking something, throwing through a window. Uh, often, actually, I'm asked, how did I learn how to throw? Um, well, I think you can understand if I would take this time to apologize to all the CTA bus drivers of Chicago for hitting their buses with snowballs when I was about five years old. So sorry about that. I was so good at throwing that I could actually pick out the window I wanted to hit. But that's another story. It's, it's true. <laughs> so Coach Addison, what did he mean to me? And what did COD mean to me? So how did it work out for me? Grades were rough in high school. COD, grades came up. I made the dean's list. And I'm not used to making a dean's list with the academic side. I was used to making the dean's list, you know, the other one that no one wants to brag about. I was great at that list in high school. Actually, I have the world record for longest detention in elementary school history. <laughs> You know, uh, things happen in life. So uh, I did pretty well as a freshman at COD. Uh, won the athlete of the year. He saw a little glimpse of it. And the most impactful thing that happened to me athletically at COD was Coach Addison talked about my temperament. And he mentioned something about being composed. And if I were to be able to compose myself and channel those emotions, that I would be able to challenge the best guys in the world. And that's pretty much when I stir, stared in a mirror and I realized that uh, success is on, me, on my terms. It's up to me. Don't blame anybody else. Don't ask for anybody else to expect to hand it to you. It was all up to the guy you see in the mirror. So, Coach, thanks for that. I don't think you realize that. But that's actually probably the most uh, important impact I've had in my life was to have someone who I looked up to, I found authoritative, Coach was a great leader. Goes without saying, you know he's going to be here next year. We, we know I'm coming back, so I'll be back. Hopefully, uh, I get the chance to hang out again with you. He just said, uh, he always gave me encouragement where manage your emotions, control yourself. And I actually became comfortable competing internationally, flying all over the world with no sleep, nothing. It became easy for me because I could only control what was in front of me and what I, can, what I did. And those are the characteristics that you need to have in order to be competitive and internationally capable. And it really came from what Coach said in about two sentences in an article in the Chaparral in the late spring of uh, 1987. So like I said before, COD worked out for me academically. It worked out for me athletically. It paved the way for me to be uh, the person I am today. Uh, I'm enjoying my life as a coach. I'm, my memories of sports are uh, personal now. I often look back and I remember how important the 
or how I enjoyed the feelings, the sensations, the sounds, the colors, and the people I met. I've had some dark times. Uh, I just kind of lock those away unless I need to call upon those to teach somebody maybe going on that same path. So I'm grateful to the Hall of Fame for recognizing my past. Uh, it's been a long time. It's, it's kind of history now, but I welcome that recognition. So thanks very much, Jane. I know when you first asked me, I balked at coming, and now I can't understand how I would have missed this for the world. So uh, I had a couple of things to say, but I don't want to take too much time. I'll just say that Coach Addison and COD, huge impact. Thanks very much for being here tonight, hanging out for so long. Hang in there. There's probably still some caffeinated coffee available. And if not, you can just steal some energy from me because I still have some. So <laughs> thanks very much.